something breaks when I call. When I call your name. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. Do you really need him? Jesus. Do you really want him? Jesus. You will call his name. Jesus. You better call his name. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? What's his name? Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. 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 When I call your name. 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 When I call your name, 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 what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? No other name. There's no other name. That could save, that could heal. There's no other name that could save, that could heal. There's no other name but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Do you really need him? Do you really want him? Call his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 we love to call your name is something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name come on if you know the great name of jesus come on if you know that his name is great come on clap your hands like you love him come on clap your hands like you love the lord hallelujah his name is jesus look at somebody and say his name is jesus Come on, clap your hands and praise him. Come on, clap your hands and praise him. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We Something about the name Jesus. Hallelujah. We know devils. Devils tremble at the name Jesus. We know that there's a healer. Amen. Thank God for a few saints here today that have been healed by Jesus. Amen. You ought to lift your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. We appreciate the Lord today. Amen. So good to see his family here again. Amen. Sister Susan and the family, good to see y'all. Amen. I believe it was last year. Around this time, this young man came in on a walker, and I prayed for him, and he left out without the walker. God, in the name of Jesus, there's healing. A couple of Sundays ago, this young lady right here, she was, she had to take shots in the back because her back wasn't good, always sitting down, couldn't move, couldn't do nothing. And a couple of Sundays ago, we prayed that healing to take place, and she was healed in Jesus' name. Hey, glory. There's healing. Hey, glory. Healing in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, because Jesus' name still exists, healing still exists. Deliverance still exists. Salvation still exists. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're so grateful. 
Amen. To know the name that carries power. We're so grateful, amen, to see that miracles still happen. You know, people don't believe that miracles take place still today, but miracles still happen. And if you really believe it, you could have a miracle today. You know, a lot of times in the Bible, amen, when people were healed, it was based upon their faith, based upon what they believed. And if you can just believe that your miracle is here today, you just believe it, you already got it in Jesus' name. Amen. We honor the Lord. Amen. If you could, everyone just clap your hands and honor and reverence our Lord, our Savior, our King, and our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We appreciate God. Amen. If it had not been for him, we wouldn't have life. Amen. We wouldn't have the activities of our limbs. We wouldn't see each other today. We wouldn't be able to move. The Bible says in him that we live, we move, and we have our being in him. Amen. Amen. We thank God for allowing us to live. We thank God for the general overseer of Church of God, the Bible Way, my pastor, Apostle C.A. Coward. Amen. The board of bishops, the presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod. Amen. Thank God for our district overseer, overseer Kevin Williams, our district elder, District Elder Andrew Johnson and all of the pastors, amen, that make up our district, amen. Pastor Nixon Philiston, Pastor Gavin McCullough, Pastor Fields, Pastor Kitchen, Pastor, amen, McCullough, Pastor, amen, God, uh, amen, all the men of God, <laughs> man, Beaver, Hout, Tillman, and amen, every last one of them. We got so many pastors in our little district, amen. You may be seated. Thank God for all our first-time visitors today. God bless you. We appreciate you coming. Amen. And we know that the Lord is going to do something. Amen. Young lady back there, what's your name again? What's your name? I haven't seen you in a while. How you been? You been doing good? Amen. God got a miracle for you. God said, if you just believe, everything's going to be all right. You came looking for something. You need prayer. And I'm going to pray with you before you leave. And God's going to fix that situation that you're dealing with. It's going to be all right. All is well in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I want to, amen, teach, amen, we've been preaching Jesus because we believe that when we preach Jesus, amen, things happen, amen. When we preach Jesus, we believe that Jesus has to come, amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but in this hour, amen, we need Jesus, amen. And we see that Jesus, amen, is a lot of things to us, hallelujah, Jesus, amen, he did a lot of things for us, and as it is today, Jesus still is in operation, amen, somebody shout hallelujah, and today I want to talk from the topic, Jesus the defense attorney, oh Jesus, amen, the defense attorney, please get the microphone right, amen, please get the microphone right, amen, Jesus the defense attorney, we know that Amen. From the beginning of time. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Something happened. Amen. And once this thing happened, God had to, amen, reconcile us back to him. And in order for us to be reconciled back to Jesus himself, amen, we needed a defense attorney, in essence, a mediator. The Bible called him the mediator. Amen. And looking at, amen, go to Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 7. Amen. And we're going to talk about Jesus being that mediator, the defense attorney for us today. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7. What does that say? Uh -huh. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And man became a what? A living soul. A living soul. So God created man. Of course, we taught. I taught last week that Adam being the first man on the earth, the Bible says that God gave him dominion and power. So, in fact, Adam was that first king. And when Adam sinned, it put sin on everybody that was born after him. Go to the book of Genesis chapter 3. 
Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Uh -huh. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Your eyes shall be open. And ye shall be as gods, uh -huh. knowing good and evil. Uh -huh. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made When Adam sinned, he put mankind on trial. Hmm. And what happened was, as soon as he sinned, he positioned all of us in a place where we needed to be redeemed because now because he sinned, it made everyone that came out of Adam not righteous. I don't want to show you this. Go down into the book of Romans chapter 3. Hallelujah. And I want to paint this picture for you and then I'm going to go forward, but I want you to see why we needed this defense attorney, why we needed somebody to mediate for us. Because when Adam did this, everything that came out of Adam was sinful. Every last, I don't care how pretty your dress is today, amen, you was born a sinner. Amen. Amen. I, don't, I don't care how pretty your tie is, how dressed up you look today, you were born a sinner. And to stop this cycle of sin on mankind, Jesus had to step in the gap and say, hey, you know what, I got to mediate and, amen, mediate for these people so they won't be damned to hell. Because people that would die that are in sin, amen, the Bible, and I'm going to paint it for you to show you the scriptures, but says that they'd be damned to hell. But, amen, because of Jesus, we had that right back to life. Amen. Y'all follow me? Let me give you this scripture. Go to 3 and verse number 10, huh? As it is written. As it is written. There is none righteous. There is none what? Righteous. Righteous. No, not one. There's not, that's not what, so what the Bible is saying that there isn't anyone that was born righteous except one. And the only one that was born, amen, righteous was God himself. <laughs> Let me explain this because some people believe that, you know, uh, in the beginning, uh, before Jesus came down, that he looked at the Father and said, Father, uh, which one of us going to go down there and die for the world? Which that didn't get, that's, that's not the case. That didn't happen. There wasn't no Jesus the Son in heaven. Amen. Amen. Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. God put himself, because there was nobody that could be righteous enough to be the mediator between, amen, God and mankind. Amen. Think about it in the Old Testament scriptures. I don't have time to explain it. All throughout the Old Testament scriptures, anytime Israel sinned, God had a man in place that can take on the atonement for the sin. But the, the man that had, amen, that was taking the atonement of sin, he had sin on him. He had problems. So God said, well, I can't really fully redeem my people unless there's a righteous seed. And, my God, God, he spoke himself into existence. He planted the seed in a body. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, let me give you this. Let me go, go to the book of uh, uh, Colossians. I go back over there to Colossians. Amen. Y'all with me? Colossians chapter 1. Let me show you this. And start at verse number 13. Uh -huh. Read. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness? Who have delivered us from the power of darkness? And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Uh-huh. 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. All right, uh -huh, read. Now, Ooh. redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of what? Sins. Sin. So this was the reason, this was the problem that we had. This is why we needed reconciliation because of sin. So God said, you know what? I need a body to use, amen, but everything that I see got problems. <laughs> amen. Moses couldn't redeem us because Moses was disobedient. Amen. Uh, uh, the prophets couldn't redeem us because they, they had issues themselves. Isaiah said he was a man of unclean lips. Jeremiah said, I was too young. I'm a child. I'm going to do this. Amen. So you see all throughout, you know, Noah, he had an alcohol problem. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So all of the men of God that God placed in the scriptures to be that buffer between man, amen, and God, or mankind and God, God said, you know what? I got to do this myself. Watch this. Read, uh-huh. Who is the image? Who of is the, the what? The image. The image. Of the invisible God. Of the invisible God. Uh -huh. The firstborn. The firstborn. Of every creature. Of every creature. So the Bible talks about Jesus being the image of the invisible God. Yes. Now, we know the Bible says this in the book of Numbers, chapter 28. It says that God is not a man. Y'all follow me? God is not a man. John chapter 4 and 24, it says that God is a what? Spirit. spirit. So God is a spirit, but God is not a man, but he had to put himself in a man. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Spirit can't die. Amen. So because God is a spirit, he can't die. So in order to redeem the world back to himself, he had to die, but he had to die in a body. And this is why the body, even though the body went down, amen, the body had to get back up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. What kind of body is that can go to hell and, and you know, in the, in, in the world, everything got to regurgitate whatever was on the body because that body had to come back up. So the Bible talks about, amen, Jesus being the image, meaning that I could see. I could see tangible God. Let me show you this. Now go down to the book of John chapter 1. Because people can't believe or can't see that Jesus, amen, is God, but God spoke it. He showed us. All right? John chapter 1 and 1, what does that say? In the beginning. In the beginning. Was the Word. Was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word what? Was God. Was God. So the Word was with God and the Word was God. Now. What is word? Can you see word? You can't see word. I'm giving you word right now. You can't see it. You just can hear it. Amen. So the Bible talks about the word being in the beginning. Being in the beginning. And then the 14th verse says this. Whatever I spoke, it came into existence. Oh 1 and 14. God. What does that say? And the word was made flesh. And the word was what? Made flesh. Now, the word that I spoke, because the Bible says that word is seeds. Yeah. And when I, God have mercy. If I plant a seed in the ground and I cover it up, I can't see it. But after a while, I can see something coming out of the ground that the seed produced. So the word that God spoke, it became flesh. Yes, my God. When we look at the Bible, and I can't go there right now because I got to expedite time, but in the book of Genesis, it's talking about let there be light. The Bible talks about two different types of light. We got a light that's the sunlight. Then you have the light that God spoke. Yes. And when God spoke that light, he spoke himself into existence. Yes. Lord, have mercy. All right, let me give you this. Go down there to the book. Now, that Bible says the word was made flesh and did what? Dwelt among us. Now, the Bible says that whatever was spoken, it became a flesh body, and not only... Amen, was it a flesh body, but it dwelt among us. Which means that God wrapped himself in something that was tangible and walked the earth. Amen. Lord, have mercy. There's no such thing as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. There's no Bible that say that. We can't say that God the, Fa God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost because the Bible said that there's only one God. And we're so grateful that we know his name. Amen. Jesus. All right, where I got you at? 14. Read, uh-huh. And we beheld his glory. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Uh-huh. Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. Now, P 
people have a hard time understanding or I don't even say understanding, believing that God can place himself in a body on earth and father the body because it's tangible and he's a spirit. Because if he's father of all and if I place something on the earth and it's a flesh body, I got to father the body. Lord, I wish I had somebody here. All right, let me give you a Bible. Go down there to Ephesians chapter 4. If, if he's the father of all, amen, because he's the father of all because he created everything. So if I'm the father of all and I create this son or I put myself in a body that comes out the womb as a son, I got to father him. All right, let me give you a Bible now. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number uh, uh, 1, uh-huh, read. I therefore. Go to 4, four and 4, uh-huh. There is one body. There's one body. And one spirit. Uh-huh. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Uh-huh. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. One God. One God. And Father of all. Now, what I can't understand is how can we say God the Father and God the Son if he said there's only one God? Mm. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. He says that there's only one God, so if there's only one God, we can't say that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost because we have a problem. I can't see, amen, God the Father because he's spirit. Amen. And then if you say God the Holy Ghost, then God the Holy Ghost is a spirit too. But if the Bible says only, now in that same scripture, talk about one spirit. Lord, have mercy. Go back up. Let me show you this. Go to, amen, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, go back to the fourth verse and read, uh-huh. There is one body. One body. And one spirit. And one what? Spirit. One spirit. So if the Holy Ghost is a spirit and it's God's a spirit and they're not one, then we got two spirits, but the Bible says only one spirit. spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, so now, amen, we have the concept of God being one. One thing that he taught to Israel in the book of Deuteronomy, they call it the Shema, it's called, uh, uh, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, the Bible talks about God being one. Amen. He said, one thing I don't want you to get confused, let me tell you something, the devil know that God's one. But people, they try to make God into three different people, but the devil know that he one. And if anybody know that God is one, it got to be Satan because he was the one that was in God's presence. Right. Come on. Lord, have mercy. Satan was in the presence of God. So if Satan was in the presence of God, let me give you this. Go down to James chapter number two. Lord, have mercy. I ain't even touched none of these scriptures that I got on this paper. Y'all give me a second. Y'all bear with me just a second here. All right? Where I got you at? James. All right, James chapter 2, amen, and verse, hallelujah, 19, what does that say? Thou believest that there is one God. Thou believe that there's one God. Thou doest well. You do a good job, you believe there's one God. The devils also the believe. The devils also believe. And tremble. So the devil know that God is one. Let me show you this. Nobody, you've never been in the presence of God like Satan's been in the presence of God. Nobody in here has ever been in the presence of God how Satan has been. Amen. I don't care how saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost you are. Nobody has been in the presence of God like Satan has been. We feel the, you know, the presence down here on earth, but Satan was in the heavenly rib covering God. Let me give you a Bible. Go down to Ezekiel chapter 28. I got to work this thing so you can understand why Jesus had to mediate for. Listen, it's the, the funny thing is, is that Jesus, amen, the Bible calls him the judge. You know, he's a righteous judge, but not only was he the righteous judge, but he had to be the attorney and the judge at the same time. <laughs> Lord, have my, because, see, the flesh side of when he put himself in flesh, he understood what this flesh body went through. That's why he had to be the mediator in the flesh body. Amen. So he could understand. He said, now, you know, because in the Old Testament scriptures, God, he, he was, he was, he, he'd just kill you. Yeah. Stuff happened, he just said, yeah, go to kill him. He out of there. Go and kill him. This person do that, kill him. You know, people that was gathering sticks. Brother gathering sticks on the Sabbath, they killed him. Gathering sticks, stole him. Somebody that, if a woman uh, had uh, sexual relations with somebody before marriage, she can die. Get stoned. Kill. 
So God was in the Old Testament, but he put that flesh on. He said, all right. Now, see, this is a little different. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted at all points as a man. So everything that a man feels, whatever you feel as a man, when Jesus walked this earth, he felt the same exact thing. So if he felt the thing, that's why things change. Remember, Lord, have mercy. Remember the lady at the well, amen, or, 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 or they, they was trying to stone somebody. They was trying to stone this woman. And everybody was gathering up stones. Now, as the Old Testament scripture said, she should have been stoned. But when Jesus put on that flesh body, he said, hold on now. Man without sin, cast the first stone. He said, hold on. Now, y'all about to stone this woman, but you got some problem. You got problem. You got problem. But she was supposed to be stoned. But when he put on that body, he said, now, I got this is why, amen, the dispensation changed to grace and truth. Because, Lord, have mercy. Truth says she should be stoned, but grace says, hold on now. We got to give her a little opportunity. Truth says, go ahead and kill her, but then the grace steps in. See, the grace is that flesh of Jesus. Said, hold on now, hold on, hold on. We, we made them in sin and we shaped them in iniquity. We can't just kill them like that. Don't kill them, don't kill them. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, watch this. The Bible says, you believe that, that, that there's one Lord, uh -huh, read. I guess you're Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, and I think that's 12, read, uh-huh. Son of man. Son of man. Take up a lamentation. Uh -huh. Upon the king of Tyrus, uh -huh. and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Perfect in beauty, uh huh. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Uh huh. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond. This is talking about Satan. This is how Satan looked in the presence of God. Uh huh. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, uh -huh. and gold. The workmanship of thy tabers and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Uh -huh. Thou art the anointed cherub. Thou art the anointed, you know, cherub is an angel. You are the anointed angel that do what? That covered. That covered. So what happened was God would sit in a seat and the angels would cover him. And so what God's presence, let me tell you why. Satan had all these different diamonds and different stones all over his body because when he was in the presence of God, God couldn't see Satan. God saw himself. Y'all ain't saying wow. nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish I had some people that was with me right here. Yeah. So what happened was when, when, when Satan was in the presence of God, what happened was God's presence was so, so strong that when God reflected off of Satan, he couldn't see Satan. All he saw was himself. And this is why Satan got so high and so lifted up and so puffed up because sometimes he would leave, amen, the presence of God and God's presence would still be on him. So he thought that he was his own life. This is why, God have mercy. This is, hallelujah. This is why, amen, the Bible said, he said, he said, well, I want to exalt my, amen, my throne above heaven because he thought that he would, he said, I want to be like the most high. Why do you want to be like the most high? Because every now and again, the presence of God will just linger on the stone so so look satan will start walking around amen and you'll start to see the stone still reflecting you still see god on the it lord i wish i had a church with me today and so what happened was god said he he said all right now i gotta get him out of this place and so later down the line i gotta expedite time but later down the line when you study amen the priesthood the priest wore the same exact attire as satan did Amen, because instead of Satan being the one or the angel that covered, God put men and God in place now to be the ones that cover. And so, Lord, I wish I had a few of y'all. So what happened was that he will allow them to get inside, amen, of the holies of holies, and they have to wear all those stones and different things because God wanted to see himself. And sometimes what they would do is, amen, I wish I had a rope or something, but what they would do is they would have some type of rep thing wrapped around them, they have a bell on it, and sometimes they would leave it out just in case that priest wasn't right in the sight of God because they had dropped dead. And what they had to do was pull them on out of the holies of holies. And when you hear the bell ring, you say, man, that priest done died. He must, something must have happened so that they would have to pull the priest out because Lord have mercy. And so now this is why Satan is so upset with us because God came down and was that buffer between us and himself. 
And Satan is upset because first God, hallelujah, put the stones on man, the same stones that Satan had, he put it on man. And not only that, but God, amen, took, you know, the Bible talks about, amen, those pipes inside of Satan, those pipes, those pipes made noises. This is why Satan was overpraised because the pipes that was inside of him, it made sounds. And so what God did, he said, you know what, I'm going to make you mad. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick you to the side. I'm going to get me some dirt. I'm going to put the dirt together and I'm gonna put some pipes inside the dirt and what I'm gonna say is let everything that have breath I want you to praise me because Lord have mercy. this is why Satan is so upset with mankind you know the angel said well well what, what is what is this about man that you just so mindful of man why are you so mindful of man man is this man lies man cheat man still God said well you you, you shouldn't have messed up when you when I made you see the difference between us and and Satan is that Satan was made perfect and beautiful. We was dirt. So every now and again, we got to get cleaned up as we use. Lord, aren't you, aren't you glad that God can just dust you off and reuse you? But when you are stone, Lord, have mercy. I don't know. Anybody got a diamond ring in here? Anybody got a ring on? Hallelujah. If you have a ring, I ain't going to take your ring in. All right. Let me get that scone. That scone. All right. Now, if you have a stone, this is a stone. If this stone breaks, you don't fix it. You can't fix a stone. If the diamond in your ring breaks, you can't fix it. You got to replace it. And so Satan, he was Satan was so mad. He mad at you because God replaced him. He didn't fix him up. He didn't, Lord, have mercy. But because, hallelujah, because I'm dirt, and every now and again, dirt get a little dusty, and it attracts dirt. And so God said, what I'll do with you, you used to be a drug dealer, I'm going to go ahead and dust you off, and I'm going to reuse you. You used to be a hormone, I'm going to go ahead and dust you off, and I'm going to reuse you. Aren't you glad that God said, I'm going to reuse the dirt? Lord have mercy. This is why God chose us to be dirt. He wanted to make Satan mad. He said, all right. Well, you want to exalt yourself above me because I made you perfect and beautiful. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get some dirt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pipes inside that dirt. And I'm going to put those, those pipes are called wind pipes. And every now and again, when you, this is why, amen, the Bible says, let the high praises be in your mouth. Because that wind pipe that's God, have mercy. That wind pipe that's down on the inside of you, you start screaming out, Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah, God. I give you the glory. This is why we, amen, this is why God ain't in no quiet church. God loves noise. Because it's to make the devil mad. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you was made of dirt and not diamonds and, 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 and onyx and sapphire? Because when stones break, I'm not about to fix no stone. I got to replace that stone. And so because Satan was a stone, he had to be replaced. But when you're dirt, you can get dusted off and reused. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. When you get dirt on that shirt that you wear today, you ain't going to throw that shirt away. You're going to wash it. And the Bible talks about being washed by the word of God. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm clean by the word of God. I'm so glad that I came in this world dirty because every now and again, God will use a man of God to speak to me, to hallelujah, put a little dial on me and a little water on me so I can be clean. Somebody shout hallelujah. So amen. Satan is upset. And Satan, amen, is on the witness stand. Telling God about you. In fact, the Bible tells us that he's an accuser of the brethren. Go down to the book of Revelation. Amen. And you can say whatever you want to say. Whatever Satan is saying about you, he ain't lying. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. He tell because I'm going to tell you how. Go down into Revelation 12 and 10. I'm going to tell you how. Everything that Satan say about you, he tell the truth. He ain't lying on you. Because the Bible says that a liar can't tarry in the eyesight of God. So when he go down there snitching, oh, he telling the truth. Watch this read, 12 and 10, uh-huh. 
And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, uh -huh. Now is come salvation and strength, uh -huh. and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, the accuser of our what? Our brethren uh -huh. is cast down. Cast down. Now pay attention to the language. The accuser of who? Our brethren. Our brethren. The accuser of the saints. My God. So never, don't ever get so in a place where you think that, hey amen, oh, I, I'm untouchable. He talking about saints right there. Amen. Saints being accused because there are some people that need some deliverance in some areas of their life. Amen. And you can look deep, you can look deep like you, you ain't nothing wrong with you. You need some help. Amen. Aren't you glad that God was that mediator and that defense attorney every time Satan got on the witness stand? He said, yep. Yeah, she, she, amen. She had smoked that joint. She would just came out of service. She had hit that, hit that joint one time. And Jesus said, well, I hear what you're saying, but I can't see what you're saying. Lord have mercy. I, let me tell you, let me explain this now. He said, I hear what you're saying, but I can't see what you're saying because everything I see is my blood. Aren't you, God, I wish I had a church with me today. Hallelujah. Come here, Frank. Hold this towel up like this. Hold this towel over my eye. Amen. Every time they come over there to God and say, oh, brother, such and such, it's Satan telling on them. God said, yeah, I can hear what you're saying, but I can't see it because the blood is blocking my vision. Aren't you glad that Jesus, hallelujah, died and put that blood there so it was the blood from the mediator that separates you from God? So our defense attorney is the one that bled. My God. Every now and again, God remind him of himself. See, when the spirit of God say, hold on, we got to take them out. <laughs> and God in the flesh, the defense attorney, he just turns his back towards the spirit of God and say, you see the stripes on my back? That was for him. My you see the stripes on my back? That was for her. You see the blood that was pouring down. You see these things in my head. Amen. That was for her. That was for him. So every hallelujah time that Satan gets the opportunity, he wants to try to snitch on you and say different things about you. But we do have a mediator. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, how, how can God be the judge and the mediator? Let me show you this. God can be the father and the son at the same time. Yes, Let me give you a Bible now. Go down into Isaiah chapter 9. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm going to tell you this. My son, where's my son at? Where's Eli? Okay. My son, that's me over there and I'm over here all at the same time. <laughs> so I could be hallelujah all the way in Florida and Georgia at the same time it's just a different manifestation of me so this is how the father could be the father and the son at the same time because I'm his father he's my son but that's me over there and we're here at the same time Lord, somebody shout hallelujah. So, amen, you see that the Father, and let me explain this to you now, because the Bible talks about Jesus being the root of David and the offspring. <laughs> Bible said that he's the root and the offspring. So the root is the beginning and the offspring, amen, is later down the line, meaning that if you got a tree, Amen, that has seeds. Amen, the orange seed placed in the ground, it starts to root. Yeah. But then, amen, months later, you got oranges on the tree. Yeah. You got fruit on the tree, but the seed was in the ground, so that means that, that Lord have mercy, that seed that was placed in the ground became the root, and then the seed was the offspring. Yeah. Oh, somebody shout Hallelujah. And so God wanted to show us the concept of him being God. Him being in one place and another place, another location at the same time. Where I had you going? Isaiah chapter 9. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
We got somebody say we're talking about Jesus, the defense attorney. All right, read, uh-huh, nine and six. For unto us, unto us, a child is born. A what? A child is born. So the Bible says that there is a child that's born. So we got a child. All right, read. Unto us, unto us, a son is given. All right, so he's a child, he's a son, uh-huh. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Government will be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called uh -huh. Wonderful. Wonderful. Counselor. Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. Wait a minute. How is he the child, the son, but is also the father? But not just the father, but he's the everlasting father. You know, everlasting deals with eternity. Meaning that he's the eternal father. But the son was born. So when the son died, Amen. The role of the son don't exist no more, but the son came back into his father. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. People have the misconception, or the misunderstanding, uh, misconception of God being that mediator. And I'm gonna take you there. Amen. Go down there to First Timothy. Amen. Chapter number two. Now this is the one that. Amen. Represented us while we were on trial. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. While, amen, we were on trial and destined for hell, there was somebody that said, listen, I'm going to step in the gap for them. Amen. And not only step in the gap for them, but I'm going to die for the sin. So I could only imagine, hallelujah, Satan is in there, amen, on the witness stand, amen, and then Jesus come in. And then I can hear somebody say, now, behold the lamb <laughs> that's coming to take the sins of the world. Come in the courtroom looking around, say, yeah, okay, I see what kind of job I got to do. But I want you to remember, God, that this is me. I'm you. We are together. That's why the Bible says, I am my father, what? One. Or my father and I, one. Read, uh-huh. Two and five. Read, uh-huh. For there is one God. For there is what? One God. Now, I want you to pay attention to how Paul lined this letter up. First thing he wants you to acknowledge is that there is what? One God. One God. Uh-huh. Read. And one mediator. And one mediator. Between God and men. Now, why would he say there's one God? <laughs> what would be the purpose of him saying that there's one God? Because he didn't want you to get misunderstand what he's about to say. Huh. He said there's one God, but I'm going to add Jesus in there as the mediator, but this does not separate us. This is still one God. Man. Read, uh-huh. The man, Christ Jesus. Wait a minute. Why would he say the man? The man. That's yes, sir. <laughs> why would he say I'm... Amen. I got a mediator here. I want you to remember that there's only one God. But this mediator is God, but he's the man. God. Because the spirit cannot die. And if the spirit can't die, I got to use a man to die for the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. So the Bible said, for there's one God. I want you to know that there's one God and one mediator between God and men. That mediator between God and men. So what happened was, amen, God wanted his people back. He wanted to rebuild and to reconcile that re relationship. But in order to reconcile that relationship, amen, you had to get somebody to be able to bring it together. Amen. When there's ever an issue, amen, for reconciliation, most case scenario, you will have a mediator. That's going to be on, amen, it, it, it really in between to take your side and to take their side. Or listen to their side and your side. Amen. But isn't it ironic that the mediator, amen, is supposed to be neutral? Oh, y'all ain't saying that. The mediator is neutral. But when he mediated, he had to remind God of who he was 
and remind him of who the people were. He had to get up and say, hey, listen, man, you created these people like this? <laughs> Talking to himself. Oh, Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So I want you to remember, go down to uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, can you read that next verse? For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, uh huh, who gave himself, who gave himself a ransom. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He gave what? Himself. <laughs> now I want you to leave that right there. I want you to go to John three sixteen. Everybody should know this because we got to make the scriptures make some sense here. Now I got a problem. Because the Bible says one thing. It says what? Uh huh. For God so loved the world. So loved the world that He gave. Uh huh. His only begotten Son. All right. Wait a minute. The Bible says that God gave His Son. Uh huh. But then when we go back to Second Timothy, when we get the revelation of what happened, read. Uh huh. Who Second gave Timothy. Himself? Who gave Himself? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, now. If you ever offer something, there's somebody that has to give it. Yes. I got you it. never see in the Old Testament the lambs and the bullets running over there saying, oh, go ahead and kill me. Uh-uh. All ready to be offered up. <laughs> An offering had to be given. Yes. The Bible says that he gave himself. Lord. Meaning that he offered himself as a ransom. Oh, Lord, I wish I had 25 of y'all with me today. Read, uh-huh. A ransom for all uh -huh. to be testified in due time. Wait a minute. To be testified uh, in what? God, in due, due time. time. Well, what do you think that means? Testified in due time is when the scripture in the book of Revelation, it talks about the lamb coming out of the throne. That's that testimony of the due time. That's him showing that I am God. I am the one that died for myself. I, I put myself in the body. I died and gave myself to myself. My God. <laughs> oh, Lord. Can I tell you something? When Abraham and Isaac, when Isaac was being offered, Abraham was about to kill himself and offer himself up. Yes. <laughs> because his son was him. Yes. Lord, have mercy. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. So you see that, amen, Abraham is about to kill himself as an offering. Just as Jesus gave himself as an offering. Bible says, read that one more time, I want you to see it real good. Who gave himself. Who gave himself. A ransom for all. A ransom for all. To be testified in due time. To be testified in due time. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, go down there to the book of Hebrews chapter 9. Amen. And 15, I'm about, I got, I'm about to push time out the way now. Amen. And for this cause. And for this cause. He is the mediator. He is the mediator of the New Testament. Of the New Testament. That by means of death. That by means of what? Of death. So the only way that we could be reconciled back to God is by what? Death. death. And once he became the mediator, this is why it's very important to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Because the Bible says when you're Amen. Baptized into Christ, you do what? You put on Christ. So if I put on Christ, amen, if I'm in that courtroom, amen, God can't even see me. He just see himself. Somebody shout hallelujah. Read, uh-huh. For the redemption of the transgressions. For the redemptions of the transgressions. That were under the first testament. Uh-huh. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. The eternal inheritance. Inheritance. Only way that I can get that eternal inheritance, I have to be inside of the eternal Father. <laughs> why, do, why don't the Bible say as many as us doesn't baptize into God, put on God? Mm -hmm. Why does it say we got to put on Christ? Right. Because Christ is God. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> why? Why in the world would we just mention a certain name? 
when we're getting baptized? Why don't we just say, hey, let's go and get baptized. We're going to get baptized in God. I baptize you in God. Because there's a lot of gods. Amen. Why can't I just say I'm going to baptize you in Father? I'm going to baptize you in Father. Because there's a lot of fathers. So we got to be specific so we can be, amen, inside of the Father. Because we're not getting in the son because the son is done away with. But we got to get back in the father because we came out of the father. We didn't come out of the son. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me show you this. Go down there. Amen. We didn't come out of the father, I mean out of the son, but we came out of the father. Go down to Ephesians chapter 1. I wish I had some more time. Ephesians 1. All right. And 4. According as he had chosen us in him. Chose us where? In him. In him. Uh huh. Before the foundation of the world. So we were chosen in him, meaning that, amen, we came out of God. We didn't come out of the flesh of Jesus, so we're not going back in him. Watch this. We came out of Adam. Once we came out of Adam, that's why that sin was on us. So then we had to change, amen, and get inside of Jesus. Yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, read. That we should be holy. That we should with, be holy. And without blame before him in love. Uh -huh. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Wait a minute. Now I got a problem. Because when you read this scripture, and I'm about to close here. I just need y'all for just a second. Having predestinated us unto, him, uh, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. So if Jesus have adopted kids, then that don't mean he a son no more. That means he's somebody daddy. <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says it. It says it plain. Because we were adopted into this because we were born into sin. So we wasn't, the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 3 and 10, it talk, 1 John uh, chapter 3 and 9, it talks about people that sin, they are the devil. And so they say that your, your, your father is a devil. So when we are born into sin, Satan, in essence, was our father. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Then the Bible also says that he the, he the father of all lies, so if you ever lied, Lord, have mercy. I'm talking about lying on everything. You know how you claim kids that ain't your kids on income tax season? That's a lie, too. All right, let me move forward. They got quiet real quick. Amen. When you go down there to the buffet, they say, how many pounds are there? You, you know how you eat grapes out of the bag before you go ring it up? That's a lie, too, because you know it got to get weighed when it gets to the Lord. Y'all ain't saying nothing now. Why y'all quiet? That's a lie, because it got to go to the scale and get weighed. You done took 10 grapes out that bag, and that grape, y'all ain't saying nothing. Don't rinse them off or nothing. Just pop them in your mouth, walking along. I'm going to pay for them. No, you ain't paying for them. You paying for what's left, because it go by the weight. All right, so all, <laughs> so at one point in time, we were slaves to sin, and not only slaves to sin, but we were, in essence, sons of Satan. Yeah. Amen. You know we use that at the club, bopping to that music? You was a son of Satan because that's devil worship. Y'all yeah. ain't saying that. So everybody has, at one point, have been a son of Satan. So this is why we had to be adopted by Jesus. And if we were adopted by him, then he becomes our what? Father. But nobody ever talks about this scripture because they don't have the understanding of who God is. All right, I'm about to get out your way. All right, go to second, amen, Corinthians chapter 5. Somebody shout hallelujah. We got somebody that's a neighbor. I'm grateful that Jesus was a defense attorney. All right, second Corinthians 5. 
At 21, uh-huh. For he had made him. I go up to, uh, go up to uh, 18, uh-huh. And all things are of God. All things of God. Who hath reconciled us to himself. Wait a minute. He did what? Reconciled us. To who? To himself. All right, all right, all right, all right. Listen, 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 listen. If Jesus is the mediator, oh he's doing the reconciliation. <laughs> the Bible says that Jesus was the mediator. Yes, it is. But then this scripture says that he reconciled us unto himself by Jesus. So in essence, him being the mediator and the reconciliator, God all in one, doing everything by himself. Yes. Using a body. Read, uh-huh. By Jesus Christ, and uh -huh. hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Uh -huh. To wit that God was in Christ. Wait a minute. This God. is how he reconciled us back to himself. Because God was where? In Christ. <laughs> he was in Christ. By God. Because God had to get inside of a body in order for it to die. Then the Bible said he reconciled him to, to himself. Read, uh-huh. Reconciling the world unto himself. Again, he says, because God was in Christ, that's the only way that I could reconcile My the God. people back to me. I did this. Yes. It wasn't Jesus the Son that did it, but it was me that got in the Son, and we did it. Y'all ain't saying that. Yeah. That was my, but listen, see, the Bible shows that he was humanity and divinity all at one, one time. Yes. My God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So he says, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto who? Himself. Himself. My God. He didn't, ain't nobody, anybody nudge him on the side and say, hey, go down there and die for them. <laughs> hey, you know, you go down there. No, you go down there and die. He did it. Himself. Read, uh-huh. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. Not tallying up trespasses. Not typing up, you know, imputing, putting it in, you know, imputing with computer, like, like computers. So imputing, calculating their trespasses against them, I'm going to step in the gap for their trespasses. Read, uh-huh. And have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Uh-huh. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Uh -huh. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Now, I don't want to get too far into this scripture, but if you understand the concept of what God did, then you understand the concept of what the pastor is today. It's the pastor's job to reconcile you back to Christ because we're in Christ's stead. That's why he indicated the man Christ Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, now we understand that he reconciled the world back to himself. And the reason why Jesus had to reconcile us back to himself because we were a rebellious people. We were a people that didn't want to listen. We were a people that, amen, did not want to be in love with God like he loved us. And the good thing about it, amen, is that Jesus said, you know what? One of these days, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to put on an outfit called man. <laughs> amen. I'm going to go ahead and get inside of a womb of not just any woman, but I got to choose a virgin. Uh, a woman that was clean and untouched. Amen. Because the next woman that I want to be with, I want them to be clean and untouched. This is why, you know, the Bible talks about us being the bride of Christ, and he said, I don't want my church to have spot or wrinkles, because y'all ain't saying nothing, because when you touch something, amen, it get wrinkled and it can get dirty. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And so what God did was he placed himself in a body. Amen. There's, there wasn't three, it ain't no three, there's no such thing as trinity. Never have been. This was something that was created in 325 A.D. They started this. And what that does is because they didn't understand the concept of why God had to get in the body and die. He had to do that because there was no righteous person on this earth. Nobody was righteous. And because nobody was righteous, God said, you know what? 
My spirit is righteous. My spirit is pure. I'm going to put myself in a body so I can die for my people. And so every time, amen, Satan is accusing you, Satan, amen, is talking to God about you, you know, God is reminded by his death, burial, and resurrection. And everybody in here today, this is why you should be excited and happy, especially when you hear the name Jesus. That thing should make you get excited. You know, some kids, my kids were a little younger, and I would come home, you know, they know that daddy's home. They'll scream, daddy, daddy, and run. They don't do that no more. Then I guess they didn't got too big. <laughs> but they'll run to me, shouting and screaming, daddy. So what happens is when you understand who your daddy is and what he did, because he didn't have to do it. He did not have to put himself in a body and die. Bible talks about him being a ransom. Yeah. Something to think about. That Jesus, and I'm going to tell you this and I'm closing. Jesus sat in heaven and was thinking. I'm not talking about no son Jesus because the son Jesus ain't wasn't in heaven. <laughs> the son Jesus, the Bible said he was born of a woman. But Jesus when he's in heaven, he was thinking and looking like, man, this is my creation. They're going to waste. I got to figure out a way so they won't go to hell. Because everybody, last scripture I promise, go to Revelation 20 and 11. And I'm closing. Everybody that was in a sinful state or died in a sinful state, they were supposed to go to hell. But God said, you know what? I done got in that body. I didn't realize that it's hard being in that flesh body. So I got to get these folks, I got to give them a different, you know, I got to give them grace and truth now. I can't just give them that truth. I ain't going to just kill them for stuff, but I got to give them a little grace. Read, uh huh. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and, the, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So this is a rightful punishment for sin. Rightful. It's a rightful punishment. But because Jesus stepped in the gap, he gave us the opportunity. Opportunity to be saved. Opportunity. So what Jesus did was, in essence, he put us back in that garden of Eden, right by that tree of life, to remind us of the life that we have inherited. Yeah. This is why Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden, because it was a tree there that could have gave them life. But because they sinned, it was death on them. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And this is why, you know, when, amen, God come back, rapture take place, we're going back to that, that Edenic state, that when we, when we back in, as if we were in the garden of Eden all over again. We'll go back to that you know, that, that back to that, that, to that state and that spirit realm where they were. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. So Jesus was a mediator and an attorney for us to restore that relationship. Amen. And it's amazing how he could use himself for restoration. It's amazing how, amen, Jesus could look at us and feel what he feel, but still say, you know what? I'm going to die for them. See, the spirit of God could not be the mediator. Because all of us, be going, all, everybody be in hell right now. Everybody. Everybody. If, that, if the spirit was the mediator, everybody be in hell. But because he put the man, he put the flesh on. And when he put that flesh on, he had a better understanding. You know, everyone's standing, I'm about to close. When somebody make a phone, 
They don't understand how that phone is. They understand what they put together, but they're not the phone. And so Jesus, he created the world. He created mankind, but he didn't understand how mankind felt. Because he wasn't mankind. If I make a shirt, I know what that shirt is supposed to do. Amen. But I can't feel the infirmity of the shirt. I can't feel if the shirt got stretched out, shrunk. I can't feel it, but I know I made it, and I know what the intent of the shirt was for. So when God made man, he made man with an intent. And when man sinned, a man got outside of the will of God. Amen. Once man did that, he said, you know what? He put himself in a body so he can be able to feel Put this on, y'all don't have to grab it on the Bible. Get uh, Hebrews chapter 4, put it up on the screens. 4 and, uh, four and uh, 12. 4 and four, 15. All right. Read, uh-huh. For we have not. And we have priest, not an high priest. Which cannot be touched. Said we don't have a high priest that can't be touched. But our high priest, which was Jesus, he was touched. Read, uh-huh. With, with the feelings of our infirmities. With the feeling. With the feeling of our infirmities. But was in all points. But what was in all points. Tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Tempted. Tempted. But no sin. Tempted. But no sin. So Jesus felt everything that we could feel. Felt it. He felt it. He felt it. And so this is how his mind changed towards mankind based upon what he felt. Amen. And you can tell, and I'm going to say this and I'm closing, I promise. When you look at a judge, a judge has the decision to make over somebody's life according to what they did. But if there's a judge that look at the record and look at all the stuff that this person has been through and they have been through the same thing, their judgment could change based upon what they feel. And so Jesus' judgment changed based upon what he felt. Aren't you glad he put himself in a body to feel something? Because if he didn't feel it, we could be damned to hell. Just lift your hands. Let's just thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you putting on a body and dying for us so you could fill us. And Lord, when you felt how we feel, your judgment changed. Your thoughts towards us changed. And Lord, we're so grateful. Lord God, we are Appreciate you dying for us. If it wasn't for you dying, Lord, we know, God, we will be undone. Lord, we'll be in a bad place. We'll be in a bad predicament, Lord, but you, you died for us. And Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Lord, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. If you need special prayer today, amen, you, you can come. I want to pray with you. If you desire a special prayer, you can come. I want to pray with you, believing that the Lord will fix whatever you need done. Everything you need fixed, we believe that God can do it. If you need healing, God will heal you today. In fact, it's already done. Thank you, Jesus. Come believing.
that is already done. Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is a healer. And the Lord is a way maker. And whatever you desire God to do for you today, I'm here to let you know that it's already done. As you leave this altar, have in your mind that it's already done. I've seen God do miraculous things. I've seen God heal. I've seen people that were supposed to be dead, dead in the hospital, rise up off the bed. Because God is a healer. God can heal you physically. God can heal you emotionally. God can heal you mentally. We believe it's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Lord, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch her body, Lord. Lord God, as you've done before, God, we believe that you can heal. Manifest your healing power and your authority right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch our heart. God, touch all of the arteries in the name of Jesus. Lord God, you are the healer. Lord, you are the healer. And Lord God, we believe it to be done. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God. Honor my prayers Lord. And touch this body. Allow it to line up with your word. Align it to line up with your scriptures. Lord in the scriptures it says. By your stripes we're already healed. And Lord we believe the healing to be done. In the name of Jesus, God, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, Lord, you do it. In Jesus' name, we praise you. God, we believe it to be done. Lord, we praise you, God. Oh, God, touch her, Lord, from the crown of her head to the very sole of her feet. Lord, I pray right now, God. The things, God, that she desire you to do and to work out for her, Lord, we pray right now, God, that it, that it be done in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, heal her body in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're a healer. Lord, you're a healer. Lord, you are a healer. You are the healer. And, God, we believe that it's done. In the name of Jesus, Lord, every discouragement, Lord, remove it. In the name of Jesus, God, give her strength in her body. In the name of Jesus, God, allow her to make it through. It. God, that she can see the light at the end of the tunnel. God, we believe it to be done. Shia, my heart. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Lord, touch her mind right now. God, every mind battle, every mind fight. God, every discouragement, Lord. Lord, I pray right now, God, that you step in. Lord, work this situation out right now, God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, even this relationship issue, God, that's going on right now. Lord, I pray right now, God, that you help her to stand strong. God, and believe, God, that you're able to make a way for escape, God. In the name of Jesus, God, all of the mental and emotional hurt, Lord God, I pray now, God, that you fix it. 
Lord, you work it out. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray you help her to forgive herself right now. In the name of Jesus. Help her to forgive herself, Lord. God, that she could move forward in her life, God. In the name of Jesus. The Lord said he made the way for you. Take the way. Don't, don't. Sometimes you can hold yourself down by staying in certain situations. God said he allowed you to get out of it. Don't go back. Don't return. Because it'll be worse than what it was. Whatever you're climbing out of, God allowing you to climb out of it for your benefit. God allowing you to move forward for your benefit. So don't return back to it. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you. Yeah, yeah, my glory. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, touch. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, touch her right now, God. And everything she's dealing with, God. God, I pray right now, God, that you make a way, God. Lord, touch her mind right now, God. God, make her stable, God. God, while her mind's racing and running, Lord, dashi amatamahosha. Lord, I pray right now, God, Lord, that you do it. You are a mind regulator. You are a mind stabilizer. In the name of Jesus. So oh, glory. It is well. Huh? Lord, you do it. In the name of Jesus. God bless us only you can. God, you help her, God. You be that aid. God, you be that buffer. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. God, we bless you. In Jesus' name. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, we praise you. God, we lift you up. God, everything that she desire, Lord. God, I pray right now, God, that you do it for her. Lord, that desire to get back to that spiritual place, Lord, God, I pray now, God, that you help her. God, pull her into it, God. In the name of Jesus, God, every blockage, every hindrance, Lord. Lord, I pray right now, God, you step in the gap. This shot time out. In the name of Jesus, God, God, right now, God, Lord, you do it. God, you touch her mind right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, that you even revisit, Lord, to that prophetic gift, Lord, that she's seeking to get back into, Lord. You stir it now. In the name of Jesus, God. Lord, you open her back up. Take her back into the spirit realm. Allow her to see again, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let it be pure. Huh, glory. Let it be pure, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We believe that it's done. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. I love us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for being a vessel to fast, God, during those three days. Lord, I pray, God, that you bless your Lord. God, give her the desires of her heart, God, due to her obedience, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord. God, we praise you. Lord, we believe it to be done. In Jesus' name, we praise you. God, we praise you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Glory to your name, God. The Bible says, except a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That water is baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if there's anyone today that will be baptized in Jesus' name, amen, you could come. We'd love to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.